Hello folks and welcome to this video about the three-day war event in Hearts of Iron 4 that I participated um, a couple of days ago. It was the beginning of June to celebrate uh, the three-year anniversary of the release of Hearts of Iron 4 and um, also the release of Patch 1.7 uh, which added some things. I don't actually remember what it is they added. Uh, but that's not really the you know the focus of the video and of our pl gameplay. It's more having fun playing around with uh, Hearts of Iron 4 uh, with an official Paradox event. And unlike events that I've been to before, where you know I've been at PDX Con and we've played on location uh, for an evening. This was quite different. We actually got to play for three evenings in a row. Uh, what was supposed to be an entire campaign of Hearts of Iron 4. And it was an entire campaign. But it was quite interesting. But before we actually... I go on a rant about what actually happened. It was really cool and interesting. I should just say that this video that you're watching right now is a little bit different and... Unfortunately, there isn't actually going to be that much footage. See, I had planned to record all the evenings and then edit it into maybe one or a couple of videos where maybe I narrated over the top and could explain what was happening. You know, just have a normal video where you can see what I was doing. Unfortunately, uh, and this also happened during your or Masters of Universalis, another paradox event that I was a part of, um, where my OBS for some reason I, I've never had any problems with OBS, but the files have corrupted, and it's because I record in MP4 and it's kind of tricky. Blah blah blah. I want m multiple soundtracks, uh, but I'm sure you don't really care about that. So. That's basically what happened. My files crashed. I couldn't use them. What you're seeing right here, though, is the little bit of footage that I did get. I did get down the first evening of gameplay, uh, I think it was. and uh, But not the, the second one. Oh, no. Right. I got the first evening of gameplay. Yeah. Not the second one in its entirety because I crashed kind of halfway through that, and that file was the one that corrupted. And then, you're like, well, but then why didn't you just keep recording? Well, I did. But here was what I did. I thought, ah, you know what, I'll just uh, click my record button a couple of times as we're I'm playing along, double click it so that I end a recording, I start a new recording. If it crashes, I only lose maybe 15 minutes of footage instead of losing several hours. Uh, however, <laughs> I kind of misclicked myself um, several times, and what ended up happening was that I only recorded the pauses in between clicks. Uh, so, like, it's just a bunch of one second clips of me not saying anything, nothing happening. It's just one second because I thought I was recording the other stuff. Uh, however, I wasn't, and that was kind of stupid. And then I thought, well, the third day shouldn't happen. Same thing ended up happening. I I was almost ready to cry, to be honest. But, alas, I, can, I feel like I can still explain. And uh, I do work for Paradox as a contractor, and I edit videos. So I've been editing the videos from that... Um, from the Twitch channel, the official Paradox uh, stream of that. And... Uh, uh, those will be going up and have already, some of them have already gone up uh, over the week. And if you do want to see what happened there, I feel like that's kind of a good place to start. You can also go over to other YouTubers' channels that participated. Uh, I don't have a list of them all, but uh, I'll name a few. I mean, I played with Jay. Jay was uh, playing Italy, I was playing Greece. Um, and uh, the Prussian Prince was playing. Uh, Germany, Flurry where we was playing uh, Great Britain, and um, Daniel uh, was playing 
S Sweden, I think. There are many others that were involved, some developers as well. I had a developer in my team playing Yugoslavia, um, Robert Dudson, I believe his name was. Um, so, yeah, there were there were feedback. Gaming was also playing. I think it was playing France, if I remember correctly. But but anyway, so to give kind of a summary of what these three days were, we got contacted and I was like, all right, we, we didn't get any rules or we kind of got an idea beforehand of, oh, this, this war, you're going to be participating in some sort of proxy kind of conflict. Uh, you're going to be in teams. It's going to be really cool. And it was really cool. Uh, but so we were divided into three, no, four different teams, teams of three. Um, the, there was the Northern Lights, consisting of Great Britain, Sweden, and Finland. There was the Central Powers, Germany, Poland, and Hungary. There was the Iberian, the French Iberian Alliance, France, uh, Spain, and Portugal. And then there was the Mediterranean Madman. And you can guess that, yes, I was in the Mediterranean Madman. Our name already says quite a bit. I mean, it's, it stands out from the rest, uh, which I found kind of cool. I wish uh, uh, people have had laughed more at that, but I did laugh quite enough about it. But uh, but anyway, I I digress. So, what was the aim of the campaign? Well, each faction kind of got um, some some goals set. Our goal in our faction was to. Um, I believe, oh, I might have to look this up, but uh, yeah, we needed for Japan to win in the Sino-Japanese War, but without actually getting involved in it. So we were allowed to send con or uh, supplies, we were allowed to send volunteers and stuff, but we could not actually declare war on each other uh, or against any of them in that sense. I think one or two other factions had similar goals, or as in, like, another faction had the goal of China winning the war, and a third faction had a stalemate goal. I think the Central Powers didn't have a goal related to that, but I might be wrong. Uh, another goal we had was to occupy or take all of the islands in the Mediterranean. I mean, that's, you know, quite ambitious, and... Uh, Beyond that, also all the entrances uh, to the Mediterranean. So the Suez, the um, uh, Turkish Straits, I forget what they're called now. It's kind of stupid, considering that I've played so many games staring at that strait for so long. But uh, And also Gibraltar, of course. Um, and that would pit us against Turkey. Uh, which would pit us against the Central Powers, because the Central Powers had goals of sur Turkey must never surrender, ever, like, even once, in any uh, situation. Um, and it would pit us against the French-Iberian Alliance, because they own uh, islands in the Mediterranean. And it would pit us against Britain and the Northern Lights, because they own the Suez Canal and Gibraltar. And Cyprus. Uh, so it was quite a challenge. Um, and let's just say we didn't get there. But I'm getting ahead of myself because what happened? We thought, you know, we thought, okay, so these factions were, were tied together in Europe. There was going to be conflict, that was certain. Uh, but <laughs> unfortunately for us, and fortunately for him. Prussian Prince was playing Germany. Prussian Prince, a uh, great YouTuber, uh, I've met him a few times uh, uh, in some events, and uh, he's really good at uh, Hearts of Iron 4 multiplayer. He can micromanage the hell out of his units, he knows, he knew exactly what to do. Uh, and what he did was absolutely insane. So he built, um, well, he, 
yeah, he, he spammed a bunch of uh, units early on so that he could get his focuses to do the Anschluss and get uh, Czechoslovakia annexed really early. I think this was still 1936, just so you have an idea of the speed. Uh, I might be wrong though. Uh, you know, it was definitely only 1936. And then, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, what happened next? Is it right? He invaded. He, he already had the focuses for uh, going around the Maginot. So he declared on the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, and then by 1937, he was ready to invade France with like a lot of divisions and a, a lot of divisions of self-propelled artillery. Um, and he had already thousands of planes in the air. So, <laughs> let's just say we, no one had anything to stop him. France wasn't ready for it. We weren't ready for it. For a while we thought, oh, you know what? Okay, he's gonna invade France. Maybe France can hold him back for a while. Uh, we in the uh, Mediterranean madmen maybe can push into Germany, take a bunch of stuff, uh, or at least kind of like be an annoyance to the central powers because it became quite clear that this Germany was not going to mess around, right? Uh, but then, I believe, in the second day or in the, at the at the end of the first day, the war was declared against France. There were, were a few problems with faction creation or rather, Spain had left the faction so that they could fabricate and stuff. So we had to pause there and then on the second day we were back in uh, Germany invading France uh, Spain and Portugal I think had like together maybe t 10 divisions 20 divisions France had I want to say maybe 50 Germany probably had around a hundred but I'm not really sure uh, what's safe to say is that they had well-trained uh, well-equipped uh, self-propelled artillery tanks all the stuff they went right in destroyed everyone, um, surrendered the faction within a matter of weeks, I want to say, and then it was our turn, because on the second day, if I remember correctly, we thought, oh shit, you know, they surrendered, uh, we can't just declare war on them, there's no way, they're probably going to declare war on us anyway. So we started preparing our defenses around the um, the main river in, uh, or it, it's like the Danube, one of the um, the feeding rivers into the Danube that passes through Yugoslavia. We were we set that as the a defensive barrier. Italy uh, used the mountains to the advantage, but. I, th I believe the war was declared on us in November uh, or something of the sort and or maybe even January February I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure 1938 we're talking about now and they came we held back for a while but then the tanks just rolled in Croatia declared independence in Yugoslavia which made a mess of everything I think we could have uh, held out quite a bit longer, actually, if Croatia hadn't, the Croatian event hadn't fired, uh, but it did. Uh, me meanwhile, also, it's fair to say that the Central Powers were at war with uh, Romania, and Romania was was holding up really well. You know, I thought that oh, they'll just stomp Romania first and then come for us, but no, Romania was holding on. Uh, Croatia fired. We defeated Croatia, but. Um, the tanks pierced through our lines, and Yugoslavia fell. I drew my lines back through the uh, the Greek mountains, and I was ready to defend it to death, or to the very last man, right? But I wasn't a major, so soon enough, as my troops were there defending uh, the Greek territory, defending uh, Sparta, uh, or well, not Sparta, because... I was much further north, don't worry. It was by Albania. 
Then uh, the tanks just rolled through Rome, rolled through Naples, Italy surrendered, our faction had to surrender. Uh, so safe to say, we didn't really get the goals that we we were going to achieve. But, uh, this was of course the second day, and the idea was, okay, well, everyone that's surrendered is made, to just continues playing as the puppet of the new faction. So suddenly we were in this giant faction of Germany, Poland, Hungary, the remainder of Spain, France, and Portugal, uh, because Germany took all the coasts, um, Italy, Yugoslavia, and me in Greece. Uh, but soon enough, of course, I think the, the the developers and Paradox just realized that, you know what, this is probably not a good idea. 1938, uh, two factions defeated in the matter of weeks. Only one faction to go. All of Europe is under uh, the control of Germany. So... What happened was that, okay, well, we'll throw the players that have been defeated into this new faction called the Wild Cards. And in the Wild Cards, we, we got to choose between six countries, I think. The Soviet Union, United States, Brazil, Iran, Mexico, Norway, and I think there was something else. I don't really remember what it was, but, okay, but that was six countries, so... Yeah, it must have been those. Um, no one decided to play Norway or Iran for that matter. But um, uh, then we we just prepared the defense of the Soviet Union basically because we realized well that's the, the next in line. That's the only way that uh, uh, we can survive, right? But. Instead of giving us a truce with Germany and being like, all right, you, Germany and the Soviet Union or the wild cards cannot attack each other for a couple of years whilst we build up and the Soviet Union gets rid, rid of its purge. No, the purge was still on and um, uh, <laughs> Germany attacked a couple of weeks in. I still hadn't even sent my troops to, to Europe from Brazil. As I started, yes, first I should say. I took control of Brazil, and the Soviet Union was basically steamrolled within a matter of weeks as well. Um, so it was like, okay, what are we doing the third day? The third day, we uh, what they decided was we would roll back to a save um, from when we switched to our new countries, um, but we were going to get a truce. But not a, a long truce of a year or two years. But uh, six months, and they removed the purge from the Soviet Union, so, you know, maybe we had a little bit of a better chance. The United States nowadays with man the guns is uh, slightly less powerful in the early game. Uh, it takes a while for them to build up, so uh, it was still 1938, and <laughs> yeah, there, it, was, it was a grueling fight. Uh, I think we... I sent troops from Brazil, I sent equipment, I did my best. Uh, I think I lost around 500,000 men defending the the Ukrainian river, uh, the main river. Uh, is it the... Oh, I can't, I, I don't actually know the name of the, the river in the area. I don't want to guess and then be, be wrong. But, um, and then we also sent troops to Iran and stuff, but there was just no way. They, they broke through in Turkey, and when they broke through the Caucasus and enveloped us, that it was it was over. Uh, but, oh, and it should, I should say also, during this truce time, Germany invaded Sweden uh, and Denmark. Just wrecked them in a, a while. And as they were invading the Soviet Union, as we were crawling on our legs in the Wild Cards faction, uh, Germany somehow got an invasion into the United Kingdom, even with a, an inferior fleet and air force. They just dashed their uh, tanks over and then just surrendered the entire faction. Um, the Soviet Union was at like 99% surrender progress, and of course our faction would not have surrendered, uh, but it's fair to say that we definitely lost, and the year was still 1939. 
Uh, I think it was must have been like November or something, or even October. Um, so, well played, Prussian Prince and uh, other members of the Central Powers faction. It was, uh, it was, it was really, a really, it was challenging and it was fun. Uh, and I think, yeah, my my ranting can only say so much. And if you if you want to see what happened, I, I do suggest going over to. Um, Paradox Grand Strategy on YouTube or uh, twitch.tv slash Paradox Interactive. Find the VODs over there. Um, but uh, yeah, that's. Uh, I think that. I mean, I don't. I don't really have much else to say. I do look forward to doing more of this. Hopefully, I'll. I'll uh, end up um, actually recording things properly. I'll have to see how. To make sure that my files stay intact. One thing I'm, I must say this event did do in me is it kind of got me confident about playing Hearts of Iron 4 again because after Man the Guns, I will be honest, you haven't seen any content from me uh, for Hearts of Iron 4 in a while and the reason for that is that I thought, well, first of all I kind of get tired of playing the same games uh, for a while so if I play a game I might do one, two, three campaigns, and then I kind of get sick of it. Uh, but then, in Man of the Guns, I was like, oh, this is cool. New DLC and stuff. I, instead of just, oh, this is a huge change, because it was a huge change. They changed the fleets, they changed the... Now there's fuel, oil, all the stuff, you know. And, of course, I had to jump into Mexico, because I was like, I'm going to do the Trotsky thing where I t um, Trotsky takes power in Mexico and then takes over the Soviet Union. However, just getting like through the basic, getting Mexico into a stable situation to survive, the, uh, absolutely insane. I tried like several times uh, alone just to make sure that things would work out. I actually recorded a bunch of episodes but then I would lose and then I would lose again and I I just decided you know what screw this I'm <laughs> I'm so tired I'm, I'm not gonna try this again but then after playing uh, this m multiplayer event I did I do feel like maybe I should come back to Hearts of Iron 4 perhaps not Mexico straight away um, I'm still kind of getting used to the naval stuff but but you know there, there's stuff I can do I, I do I, I feel like I've kind of understood how the Navy works now uh, how to manage fuel and and all of that. So uh, hopefully you're you're also kind of looking forward to more Hearts of Iron on my channel. If you have any ideas, do let me know down below. And if you did watch the uh, any other YouTubers that were streaming this or maybe the actual Paradox streams, uh, do let me know what you thought of the event. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And uh, and yeah. I hope to see you in the near future. This being Game Gapster, I'll see you sometime soon. Farewell. <laughs>